It's time for To The Last Drop Podcast with Liam Delcom and Brendan Nell. We are back and welcome to our show. Uh, we've got, I suppose, post-World Cup blues, uh, Brendan. Um, well, not just the two of us, I'm talking about the country. Um, the post-World Cup blues is the realization that it will take quite a few months before we see the box in action again. Of course, we'll see them in action as individuals for the uh, respective teams. Um, but it's going to be quite a wait. Well, it's even going to be morning, Liam, yes. And it's going to even be quite a wait to see them for their respective teams because um, mm. from what I gather is that they've all been given, the South African guys, of course, have been given a three-week enforced layoff. I know there's some rugby bosses that aren't quite happy about that um, because they apparently were only told on the quarterfinal weekend that all the box have to get a three-week layoff. And so that means... Some of them are going to only be back in to end of November, early December. Well, I would say that the franchise bosses are clearly uh, underestimate what it takes to stand on the back of a bus or on top of a bus uh, <laughs> for three, four days uh, in the hot South African sun. Uh, sure, they, they they obviously were well hydrated, but but still, you know, it takes a supreme effort. <laughs> yeah, I just think every time I think of that video of of, of the box on that Safir plane and Franz Malherbe, who, who really looked like you know <laughs> that that father whose wife and kids are in the shops shopping, and he's just irritated sitting in the car. He he's, he was done. He was really done. And I'm, yeah, I feel. Listen, I mean, you and I have probably both been somewhere along the lines on a bus like that. Um, with a team that's won, um, and it's 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 hard work, and I can't think after three days of trying to look excited the whole time. Uh, obviously, they have to because the fans obviously want them to. How, yeah. how some of them must be feeling. There's a video of Malcolm Marks going around as well um, of him looking like he was very hydrated, and and you know, well done. Mm. You win two World Cups. Yeah, well, I, I give that to you. You've got to have some sort of celebration. No, oh, absolutely, absolutely, and 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 obviously, whoever went out there to go and support the box or, or show the appreciation. I mean, uh, people really did have fun. And uh, I think South Africans just generally brought their A game. Yeah. I, I and it's, it's interesting that you say the, 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 the sort of almost World Cup hangover in a way is, is a good word for it. Because I did do some URC action this weekend and it felt very low. Key. It felt very sort of mm, yeah, yeah. anti-climax. And I suppose it's going to take a while for us to, to get back into that way before the URC sort of excites us again, and especially with our teams playing overseas. Uh, I, I thought I would have been used to these 9 o'clock kickoffs, but 9.35 URC kickoffs are mm. quite brutal for you when you have to do a couple on a weekend. So, yeah, it's going to take a while to get back into that. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of getting back into it, uh, next year, Rassi Rasmus stays on. Uh, well, when I say stay on, he's obviously not active rugby, but... Uh, the mantle of Springbok coach uh, will rest on his shoulders again. Um, that's kind of been confirmed. I mean, we suspected this anyway. Uh, obviously, uh, in, in that sense, the dynamic doesn't change an awful lot uh, for the Springboks. No, it doesn't. And I think we, you know, Russ has always been contracted until 2025, so we always knew that was probably going to happen. Um, I think we, we've heard it a couple of times in sort of, an, I know it hasn't been officially confirmed, but... Yeah, it makes the most sense in terms of continuity and in in, in terms of all these other things, and, and and we we mustn't. I mean, it's always it's wonderful. I was, I was chatting last night to a couple of guys at the book launch, people from SA Rugby, and they were talking about how we don't realise that some of this group have now won three World Cup medals. They've gone bronze, gold, gold, and in likes of Jesse Creel, Damon Delinda, Andre Pollard, guys like that. And, and that's quite a feat to do, and, and not many countries can do that. And no one's ever done three in a row. And I think it's a huge task to do three in a row because you're going to have to almost have a totally different team. And mm-hmm. in terms of the coaching structures, if Rossi doesn't stay on after 2025, whoever takes over, and at the moment the speculation obviously is it's either Dion Davids or Ms. Wondele Stick, if either of those take over, and, and you would think in terms of the continuity argument, they one of them probably will, um, yeah, they've got a lot resting on their shoulders and a lot of expectations going into a new World Cup. And and the, and I think the biggest worry for me is is that the same as I had the same worry for Jacques Ninaba when he took over was the fact that he's a coach that hasn't come through the ranks. He's a coach that doesn't have his own sort of coaching CV, if I can put it that way. Um, mm. And I know crowds are fickle and South Africans are quite fickle with these things. You get a couple of losses and suddenly all the pressure's on the guy and the pressure is going to be anyway, but even worse because 
you know, they'll say, you know, he, Rusty just put him in the job. So I'm hoping that, and, and I'm sure, and I, I say this with a caveat, knowing that we're talking about somebody who's engineered two World Cup wins. So I, I, I don't, I don't think they don't know this scenario. I think they they will plan for it, but often these things sort of happen things beyond your control in the next couple of years. So that's going to be a very interesting one to watch over the next couple of years, how they develop that new coach, if I can be that way. Yeah. Um, I think it would be dangerous for SRI Rugby to just say we will, uh, you know, look for replacement internally because once you close the doors and the shutters, uh, you basically close yourself off to a potential opportunity. So, you know, th- that might be the, the the mindset. And if that's the prevailing mindset, that's fine. But I don't think they should uh, completely shut themselves off uh, from the idea of looking yeah. uh, beyond what is currently available to them. Look, I think the one thing is in terms of a succession plan, you probably want it to come through in terms of continuity through someone who's been there through the last two World Cups. But, mm. yeah, the Ian Foster example is the perfect one of how things can go wrong. And I mean, even though they did reach a World Cup final, you ask most of these Eden fans, Ian Foster wasn't their favourite guy through the through his mm. reign there. And a lot of them are looking forward to the new guy coming in, the, to, to Razor coming in. And I, I worry a bit about that. But um, saying that, I mean, it's four years, a lot can happen in that time and, and the box can change quite a bit. But the, the, the alternative to that, of course, is that if you bring somebody new in, a Johan Ackermann or a uh, John Dobson, I'm trying to think the names on the top of my head, those guys are literally going to come in and start new. So... That's the alternative. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. not sure which is which is really the right one. I suppose we'll we'll sort of mum, bumble it through. But in, in terms of talent, and we're going to talk about that now, is, is is there's there's such a lot of young talent coming through, and and and, and mm. the big thing is going to be to mold that into a World Cup winning team. Yeah, I mean, if they uh, if they look uh, outside of what they have at the moment, or who's contract at the moment, then um, it shouldn't necessarily be head coach. But I mean, you can get some fresh blood in, some fresh thinking. I mean, that that's kind of uh, where I was going. Yeah. Um, because I think once you sort of close yourself off, then um, I think that can be dangerous because th- you start believing your own stuff and you don't look wider than that. But yeah, you you made the point about uh, talent because there are few, uh, quite a few players that uh, well, there are a couple that will definitely not be available for the next World Cup because I mean, uh, you know, the sunset will arrive for them uh, a lot sooner. And then there's a quite a large group of players in the sort of 33, 32, 31 band at the moment, uh, you know, where you can probably ask the question, will they still be around? Because it's a it's a significant group. I mean, obviously, Dwayne Vermeulen won't be there. Dion Free won't be there. Dion uh, Free still be there. Sorry, who? Dion Free still could be Dion. there. I won't well, get yeah, the game from being there I mean, 41, so. Yeah, who's, to, who's to say? Who's to say? Um... <laughs> And there's Vary Leroux, obviously he hasn't uh, pulled the pin on his international career, but I mean, he will be, what, 38, so it's it's unlikely. Uh, Trevor Niakane, 34, so um, unlikely there as well. And then, of course, you've got that band of players. Uh, well, you've got, I think, Corpus Reinach, 33, Vincent Koch, 33, uh, Makazola Mapimpi, 33. Um, you know, so that puts them in in the danger zone, I suppose. And then you've got uh, Fafta Karksia, Kulisi, uh, Bongi and Benambi, Franz Malerbe, uh, Franco Mostert mm-hmm. in the 32 band. So, you know, there's there's quite a few. And then just there's a couple, obviously, of 31 that we can talk about in a moment as well. Yeah. And I mean, look, I mean, we've seen now, and there's enough examples in the last couple of years the Skulk Britzes, Dion Faris. And mm-hmm. even the Johnny Sextons of this world. I mean, um, uh, this weekend I was watching Willem Albert's play again. He's, what, 39. So, I mean, there, there are these these players that tend to play a lot longer nowadays than we'd expect them to. But, yeah, uh, the problem is with that, even all those names you mentioned, um, if you get two or three of them to go through, I think you're going to be lucky. I don't think you're going to get more than that. And mm, exactly. I, I would probably yeah. put, put, put sort of like money on it being a prop or somebody like you know, one, of, one of the front row guys. That does it. I don't think we're going to see any backline players go that far. Um, and the danger in that is that I mean, and they've done very well to keep this group together. But now the big problem is, uh, well, I won't say problem, but the big challenge is to get the new guys in. And they've already started that. And I think that's where, if we go back to the Wales game last year um, in Bloemfontein, where they made 18 changes, I think that's the perfect example of well, everybody was up in arms that we lost the test. I think that was the perfect example of how they were looking forward to the next group. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's just it's going to be interesting to see how they manage their transition because there's no lines to it now. There's there's you can you can play around a lot more, but yeah, there's an expectation. You double world champion, so everyone wants you to yeah. carry on winning. In fact, that Bloemfontein test against Wells is an interesting example in that there's a couple of guys who haven't played for the box since. Uh, there's Kutsia, there's Fasi, there's Mpunu, there's uh, Elstad, I think. Yeah, um, Robert Lowe, probably, uh, if I remember. Right. No, I think he, play, he played again after that. He, he, I think he went to Australia. Uh, but there is somebody else, uh, Ruan Norki, I think. Yeah. And so, they... there's, so there's a couple of guys there. I mean, it's, uh, you don't want to say that the, the international door has been shut on them, but uh, I'm, I mean, I suppose if you look at L started at 33, he's, he's unlikely to play another a, a World Cup. Um, but some of the others are more younger and, you know, just to say that they can't make a return. Mm-hmm. It's, it's almost like that test uh, against Wales as well in, in Washington. Uh, Rassi and Jacques' first one uh, when they came in as a coaching duo in 2018 uh, lost to Wales in, 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 in Washington and it was, a, it was a game the box should have won. And there's a number of guys who had to wait their turn to get back in. Uh, Ox and Chess, probably the most notable example of a player who had to wait three years to get another crack. Yeah, and I think if you if you go through, um, yeah, we can go through probably positions in that. I mean, if you look at the the front row, I mean, we're probably not going to have most of that front row, but there is an Ox and Chair there. Um, you, you've got some young hookers coming through. Of Johan Krobelar is an obvious one that I can't see not playing for the Springboks in the next couple of years. Um, Joseph Dweb is still around at that stage. Um, yeah, uh, I think I think you, know, you look at as well a bit further, someone like Asanati Bakanye, pronounced that right. right. Um, and, I mean, just just what he can do um, with his um, rather rather bulky fr- frame, and uh, he's, he's a pretty decent scrummager as well. Uh, there's some good carrots in the comp who scrum very well in, in Argentina. Yeah, um, he's 26, the... yeah, so he's, he's very much, yeah, he's yeah, certainly so, I mean, good. There's definitely guys coming through on in the front row. I had locks, I mean, you know, you mentioned the Ruan Lokia, Salman Marat, if you can obviously caveat say if he, if he doesn't get injured. Um, and I think, yeah, uh, what is he, 24? Yeah, he's 24, you're around there. So, um, I mean, if you look at that, there's there's definitely some some locks coming through. Um yeah, Lord de Jager. I mean, what is his status? He's he's thirty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then you look at you look at obviously there's a bunch of these these sort of sort of five seven forwards um, that 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 are around as well. So yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's enough talent. These forwards we never have a problem with in this country. Mm. Just look at the. Let's. Sorry, I was going to say let let's take a step back for a moment and and in that band of of players who are thirty one years old. You give me your selection of who do you think is most likely to play in the next World Cup. I present to you Stephen Kutsov, Eben Etzebet, Peter Stef de Toei, Damien Dalende. Interesting. All four of them, just, uh, their bodies take quite a battering. All four of them. <laughs> um, but I've learned in life not to bet against Eben Etzebet or Peter Stef de Toei. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, <laughs> We were, in fact, joking last night with a book where they talked about Brian Lehmann's tackle on Derek Hochart, and somebody in the audience quipped, um, that wasn't the biggest tackle at the World Cup, asked Geordie Barrett, you know, what, seven times? And I mean, uh, Peter Steff, there's a meme going around of Peter Steff's sort of a, a map of the field and says his heat map for his tackles, and it's in the shape of a goat. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I don't know if those guys can keep up that sort of punishment. Um, I think Kitsy could probably. I'm not sure the other guys. Yeah, yeah. I think Kitsif will probably be okay. Yeah. Um, you got to remind me who's all 31. I don't have that list in front of me, but uh, who else are we talking about? Uh, okay, so then you've got uh, the guys who are 30. It's Kwaka Smith, Jean Klein, uh, Marvin Ori. They are 30. So they also sort of in the bit of a mm. – in the, in the amber zone. Yeah, I could see probably somebody like Marvin making it. Um, yeah, more five lock than a four lock. I think Jean Klein, yeah, the same sort of thing. You also got a Jason Jenkins, who's obviously qualified as well, mm-hmm. coming as well. But I think you're probably going to look at a younger set of locks. And as I say, Salman Marat would be the four lock for me. That probably has been to sort of earmark to come through, um, yeah. if you can, if you can obviously. And then, uh, uh, yeah, you got to look at. I mean, Ronald Kier is definitely one of the guys coming through. Yanka Swanepoel. 
Uh, mentioning some of the Bulls guys. I, yeah. Right? But I think Nurkia would would have to be one. I mean, just his line out ability uh, is is something that is quite phenomenal. Um, yeah. So yeah, he would definitely be one. Um, we mentioned Kwaha Smith. Now there's one where he, there's a sort of a, a timelessness to Kwaha, isn't there? I mean, yeah. you, you don't expect him to sort of uh, to sort of to, to to lose any of his uh, vitality. Well, if, if you if you had to make me put money down now. Um, on the guy who's going to probably fulfill the Dion Ferry role in the next World Cup, I would probably say Quach is probably the closest for me in terms mm. of he's the, he's the type of guy who could do that. And he's just got this amazing ability that whenever you you underestimate him, he proves you wrong. So I'm, I'm never going to bet against Quach Smith. I think he's he's an amazing player. And he surprised me. I mean, I obviously watched him a lot at sevens level, a lot at the Lions as well. And, and, and what he's done at the international level has been pretty amazing with his, his impact. So I can see him easily doing yeah. the other three skull grits role in the uh, the next World Cup. But I think we're probably going to, yeah, there's probably a bunch of names that we, we haven't even thought about who are going to come through as well. Um, yeah. The next two years. That well, we're, if we're talking about, so. Yeah, I mean, if you look at players who have played uh, for the box in the last four years, well, since the, la- the previous World Cup, the 2019 World Cup, um, that weren't part of this squad. I mean, there's, there's, there's a number of names uh, that will pop up. Uh, Thomas de Tue, for instance, mm. who will be, what will he be, 30, I think? Well, he'll, he'll be young enough, let's put it that yeah. way. I mean, he's not, <laughs> yeah, he's not that advanced. And he's one of the unlucky ones because he's always that guy who's that yeah. six prop and hasn't sort of you know, got the nod. He, and his versatility is almost counted against him a bit. So, um, so I mean, he's definitely one. Uh, I, I don't know, there's... there's I don't see. Too, I think he's twenty. I think he's twenty eight now. At Thomas, yeah, I don't see too many of the current sort of fringe um, forwards so much. Um, I think when you talk about it, you, the, the younger generation, the Elric Lowe's, the Ivan Rurses, those are the guys you're going to start see, seeing come through. Um, well, there's 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 Jean Luc Dupree at twenty eight now. There's Dan Dupree. Yeah, uh, also they're young enough, definitely. Too. There is, in terms of forwards, uh, yeah, I mean, those those are the sort of the obvious ones. Uh, Stina Kamp, we spoke about earlier. Um, Volko Lowe. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely one. And, and the way he scrummed on the weekend, okay, I know it was only Zebra, oh. um, but the way he scrummed at the weekend, I think there's definitely a big case for him in the next couple of years. If you look at those players, there's a... The, the biggest thing to me about the Jean-Luc Dupre and the Dan Dupre is, is that they're already 28. They've had lots of club experience, but they haven't had 50 tests. And and that also, that's the one thing that helped the box through in this World Cup is that it was the most experienced box team ever in terms of caps. And so mm-hmm. when it came to those crucial moments, they knew exactly what to do. There was no panic. There was no... And I think that's going to be the challenge is to get this T squad together that those combinations play together, that they they obviously I think the big thing is to get those guys to get the combinations together to get 50 tests or, or as many tests as possible, um, you know, to play as a unit. And and not just them, the spine of, of the team, those are the players. If you want them to go to the World Cup, uh, and that's where Jake was very successful, is is identify them early and then get them to play together as much as possible. And uh yeah, in certain positions, we we rather blessed. If you think scrum off, we've got Jaden Hendrickson, Grant Williams, who are both the um, we've got in fact got a number of scrum offs across the country who could easily fill into that role for the next World Cup. Um, but there's other places like Flower, for instance. Um, Sasha Feinberg Ngumzulu is obviously a key mm. key guy that you you'd want to have a World Cup at, at this moment. Um, but you're going to need to give him as much play as possible and as much time as possible to settle into the position. You've always got a Damien Willem, so he'll be there. And by that stage, yeah. Damien's going to be one of those guys who's going to go through four or five World Cups, but um, if everything still goes right. But, yeah, it's just it's just you've got to give these guys time in the seat and in the saddle. Uh, where does that leave Apolele Fassi and maybe a player like, uh, I mean, Fassi's young. He's, what, 24, 25? Uh, and then you've got a guy like Spoon Corsi at 27. Yeah, well, I suppose Spoon, and you've got to put him in the same boat as Apiwe Dianti, who's just come back as well and playing mm-hmm. for Sharks, and um, by all accounts has mended his ways. And um, both of them, I think, have got some big question marks above their head at the moment. Um, and just in terms of the 
ability to stay on the right side of the law and and, and on the right side of mental issues and things like that. And I don't want to make light of it in Spoo's case, but um, yeah, the, it is a thing that he's going to have to work out for himself. And they get, both of them have got challenges they're going, to, they're going to have to overcome in the next couple of years if they want to make it into the Springbok team. Um, mm. But I think in terms of Fassi, I think the um, he's definitely somebody who's earmarked and somebody who disappointed me in a way because – yeah, he had this wonderful breakthrough season. We all thought he was going to be a springbok for the next couple of years. And yeah. and then he sort of dropped off. And, and from what we've heard sort of behind the scenes, there's some elementary skills errors that he makes. If you look at the amount of times he loses the ball in contact. Yeah. Um, I mean, it but, was the, the – sorry, it was the Bloemfontein test as well that, that yeah. sort of tainted him. And and that's the type of thing he needs to work on. And I know the Bok management have spoken to him about it. Um, how how successful that is. And there's one or two other players that we've heard that they've told them to to concentrate on certain skills. Um, Ambrose Papiro was one of them. That's why he also sort of fell away from the from the box squad. We heard as well for a while, and he seems to have rectified it. And the rugby he's been playing in the last year has been pretty decent. So. Mm. I think that's the key to these things is that there's a certain level. That's the one thing that this Bok team has done. They've set a level and a standard in terms of skills on, 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 on what they want from their players. And um, I know it sounds there's no entitlement. There's no, they always say those things about there's no assholes in the team type thing. Um, and I, they're not as bad as saying, as the All Blacks saying, what good people make good All Blacks and then they, they ignore Shannon Frizzell. But um, yeah, there's, the, the box, not the only one to be fair. No, no, there's not the only one. And, and, and listen, not throwing stones, yeah. Everybody's, um, yeah, I mean, rugby players do have some complicated lives at times. Um, but there is a standard set in the box. The bottom line is there's a standard set there. And, they, and they're and quite open with players when they visit the provinces. They tell them exactly this is what's lacking in your game. And then it's up to the player. And, and I've got the sense, and I've, I've, I've got no evidence for this, but I've got the sense knowing the way they operate that if a player doesn't come back into the squad, he probably hasn't fulfilled that request of theirs and what they want him to do. So I think that's the one thing you've got to look out for the next couple of years. And even this weekend, again, the Sharks were, I mean, geez, you watch them in the URC, they were the masters of their own demise. They 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 really were poor. And yeah, Fussy had a great game. He had he really had a good game. He made the most carries in the in the, but the amount of times he lost the ball in contact is a concern mm. still. And and he also yeah. had one bad, bad mistake where he tried to um dive on the ball and it slipped out and 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 Osprey scored. And yeah, I suppose that happens to everybody, but yeah, it's just those things are quite there yeah. at times. Yeah, and then, and then there's another player um who dropped off the box radar for slightly different reasons. Um, but I would imagine he should be back in the frame come a selectors meeting next year. Uh, Warwick Holland. Yeah, um, there is another situation. And I mean, I, I, the story I've heard behind that is just, it, so, you know, I know a lot of the agents, and I don't want to, because we speak to a lot of the agents, <laughs> and we know a lot of the agents as well. And we know the situations, why they move players at times. And um, yeah, that was just a situation where the wrong guy went to the wrong place. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, Warwick's not a guy that should be in um, in Paris. He just he just didn't fit. That that fit didn't work. Um, and 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 John Dobson's words, I think, with us the other day was that they trained very little in Paris, and that wasn't for guy that Warwick's um, <laughs> build. That wasn't the best. Yeah, thing. the the, the jambon bear and the um, yeah the the, uh, the the pastries. Uh, thing yeah, and I, and I think you can see already, and a little bit of we watched him with with the storm as he's already. Almost back into that comfort zone where he's, he, you can see he's a much different player. And yeah. I mean, there's a reason why he's called the boogeyman. I mean, he, he, that guy can step anybody as well. And, and I, I'd hope he comes back. And I, he's really a type of player that we need definitely in, in the Springbok team in the next couple of years. But saying that, I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, Chesson Colby's probably still going to be around for a couple of years. Maybe, he might not make another yeah. one. But you've got the Canon movies, the Kurt, the Orances, Damon Willems. Uh, so you've got a lot of those players coming. Well, well, there's that very interesting band of players who are 29 uh, at the moment. So you've got Andre Estes and Andre Pollard, and Malcolm Marks, Cheslin Colby, and Lucanio. Yeah. Well, I can see all of them. In fact, the majority mm-hmm. of them I could probably see there, especially Andre probably be in, being at the next World Cup as well. Uh, I think 
it's almost strange that he's playing overseas. It, he sort of drops off the radar and comes back, and he's everyone's favourite. <laughs> and I mean, you can't argue against a hundred percent kicking record for you. So how many games? No. Have so. Yeah, no. um, all those guys I think would be welcomed with open arms. And I think that, that sort of nucleus and that sort of experience you'd want in a World Cup squad over the next or in the Springbok squad over the next couple of years. Mm. And then two guys in the sort of 28 band, or three of them, uh, who would definitely be part of uh, the next setup uh, would be Elkis Neyman, Oxenche, Marco van Staden. Yeah. Now, I think we're probably going to see a couple more of those guys come through. I think in um, Nava, Nava from Western Province, um, yeah, the, the Frankie Horns of, of the Lions, I think there's that. If the if either of the Chituka brothers get um, their passport stuff sorted out, which is one of those weird sort of mysteries of, of rugby, yeah. I mean, never quite sure. Nobody ever answers the question about what it's Yeah, like it's, it's one of rugby's black holes, isn't it? Yeah, but if either of them get, because both of them are good enough to play for Springbok, so um, yeah, it's, if either of them, then they, they might be in the mix as well. Um, yeah, there's just there's just a bunch of young good players coming through, and we're probably going to see the new ones. I'm I'm not too worried. I think the biggest thing to me, if you talk about the third successive World Cup, the biggest challenge is going is about building this new side in time with the right mix of blend of experience and etc. and giving the youngsters enough caps over the next couple of years. And they, Russia and them have shown it can be done in two years. They've done it twice. If you think the second time, take away the COVID year and you take away the Lions year with the, those weird bubbles they had, uh, there's no reason why they can't build another squad in the next two years and hand it over to another coach. But, yeah, these are all variables. And I think they're going to have to – they're going to be targets. We all know they're going to be targets. And they're going to have to pers- yeah, have the right – Okay, I won't say game plan, but plan, long-term plan, strategy, and the danger is always there that whatever new coach comes in has his own ideas, even if he's been in the system for the last six years. Yeah, yeah. And that might not yeah. always work. Yeah. Look, there's a lot to look forward to uh, next season. Uh, we don't have the Springboks full roster yet. We do know, however, on the end of year tour, uh, they will play England in November at Twickenham, um, and that is a match that I think a lot of people are really, really, really looking forward to. Um, Tom Curry especially, or, or Bongi especially. Oh, sorry, I wasn't thinking individuals. <laughs> I was just sort of... Um, no, yeah. Yeah. no, listen, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing about that for the next two years is that we haven't seen the fixture list for this new Test Championship. Um, yeah. Though that's going to bring its own challenges and probably need a bigger squad anyway to handle that as well. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they manage that change as well. I suppose it's too easy to speculate now about everybody and how, how big that squad will be. But um, yeah, I think we want to talk about Springbok rugby as much as possible while we still can, because you never know what happens in the next year, as, as 2020 showed us. Yeah. That's probably where we have to leave it. Um, you are still on your book tour, so good luck on that front, and um, we will speak soon. Yeah, I, I mean, Cape Town, lovely place to be for a book tour. I had a lovely time last night, but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm going to go back to reality and back to back to karting, uh today, so uh, it's going to be fun. But yeah, if you haven't bought the book, please go out and buy the book. It's in all the major book shops. Uh, I almost said book vinkles. Yeah, I see talking, thinking of Afrikaans, <laughs> talking English. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. Listen, we chat again next week, and uh, I suppose we're going to turn to URC action at some point. We will. Uh, it will get all our attention next week. <laughs> Till next week, we'll chat to you guys then again, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. And a reminder, you can find all the To The Last Drop podcasts on the Brendan Nell YouTube channel, iono.fm, Spotify, player.fm, Pocket Casts, Google Podcasts, and iTunes, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts.